that we left instead For all the times I've done promises dead I had nightmares along the way I made prayers in vain Welcome everybody to the third episode of Monday Night Raw in the new era. It's here tonight. We are here in Toronto, Canada as here comes the greatest of all time, the GOAT, Mr. Hustle, Loyalty, Respect, John Cena. Cena has scheduled this opening segment here tonight because he has some things he wants to talk about. He has some things he wants to talk about and we are here all for it. Thank you all for clicking the video, getting on, watching episode three. Is John Cena making his way down the ramp and starting to go into the ring. Before he gets started, I want to let you all know that you guys can watch SmackDown on Fridays at the Superkick Theory YouTube channel. As here he is, the GOAT, John Cena. Before we all get started once again, make sure you go down below. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. As here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Raw. How are we doing, Toronto? Good, that's good. Everybody, take your seat. Our job here in the WWE is to entertain you, and tonight, well, we have a very entertaining show for you tonight. But first, first there's some things I have to address. The end of a show two weeks ago... 
I defeated Roman Reigns in the center of this ring. Bloody mess. I see the crowd signs. And I will say I do appreciate them. But if I can get your attention towards the Titan Tron. If you can look very closely. If you can zoom in. You will see just barely a man named Gunther eyeing me down. Now Gunther, you know. I'm not looking to sit here and try to waste Toronto's time. So, you know what? Gunther, you have a problem, obviously. Come on out. Let's settle this. Oh, my. John Cena saw Gunther walk out at the end of his match. And now he has raised some questions of his own. Why did Gunther walk out during his match? Just to sit there and kind of just watch him. And, you know, I feel like that's something we all can kind of question about Gunther as we have already noticed that Gunther is in the gauntlet match with Roman Reigns, John Cena, Drew McIntyre, LA Knight, and Braun Breaker. So it, like I said, it does beg the question to see is Gunther kind of singling out John? It may be his biggest threat in the match after beating Roman Reigns, our tribal chief. We will have to sit here and wait and see. Was it that obvious? John, I do have a problem with you. And that is after the years of scraping your name off the legacy of professional wrestling, you come back just to imprint your name even further. You said you wanted to become 17th time world champion. John. You are nothing but a clown in the eyes of the Ring General. You have done nothing in the legacy of the professional wrestling industry but tainted it. And I refuse to let you, let you defeat a true professional wrestler in Ric Flair's record by letting you become 17th time world champion. So I clash at the castle. I will chop you. I will break you down limb from limb. I refuse to let some part-timer come in and take the spotlight from the consistent professional wrestlers. Oh, okay. You think I'm part-time. Well, Gunther, let me explain this to you. Two weeks ago, I main evented Monday Night Raw. When Triple H gave me a call, I was there that very next day to main event, to put the show on my back once again. I'm not here as a part-time Hollywood deal. No, I am here full-time as WWE superstar John Cena. And after main eventing against Roman Reigns, sure, I wasn't here last week. But that was only because I was getting stitched from the battle wounds that I suffered. And now I'm here. Now I am fully back, fully rested, fully recovered. And I am here tonight to make a statement. That statement being, I am no part-time. I am here full-time. So, Gunther, how about me and you have a little bit of a match? Tonight, right now. Come on. John, that's not going to work. You see, you can... You're not in no position to challenge the ring in general. But, at Clash of the Castle, one time we will end up being in the same ring together. I can feel it. But between me and you, the clear winner is obvious. So, let's have a little bit of fun. I will have an open challenge. And you can have an open challenge, John. See if we can win our matches. Get some momentum before the pay-per-view. And then we can settle it in the ring together. You know what, Gunther? That sounds like a great idea. Great idea. I'll see you at Clash of the Castle.
Find? What the hell are you talking about, Randy? Last week, Tommaso came out and he attacked me after my match and nothing was done about it. I come here and I attacked all oh, board Johnny Wrestling and now I get fined. No, no, especially, you should, no, you should be freaking thanking me. I'm your United States champion. You're thanking me. You should be thanking me that I even showed up. Oh, you're right, Logan. Thank you. Thank you for showing up to your job. Yeah, that that's on me. My bad. Well, since you actually showed up this week again, um, well, for attacking Johnny, he actually requested a match with you tonight. So that will be happening tonight. The hell it is. I'm not doing that. No. No, I, I was just making a point to go even with Tommaso. No. I don't, bro, I don't even have my ring gear with me. That sucks. It really does. But my decision still stands. It'll be you versus Johnny. Now, in an Extreme Rules match. And with all that, at Clash at the Castle... You'll be defending your United States Championship against Maso Champa with, with Kevin Owens, a special guest referee. Oh, real funny, big man. Real funny. Okay, okay. You want to stack the cards against the Maverick, the United States Champion? It's fine. It's fine. I see how it is. All righty, wow. Wow, the match was made official by our general manager, Randy Orton, between Logan Paul and Johnny Gargano. As you can see, that left arm kind of taped up there. That's going to be... It's going to be something to keep an eye on, especially when Johnny has a major, major match here at Clash of the Castle and a major face-to-face -face later on tonight against his opponent at Clash of the Castle and one Ilya Dragunov. But... If you ended up, if you didn't stick all the way to the end last week, we saw Tommaso Ciampa attacked Logan Paul at the end of Logan's match. He successfully defended the championship, and now we have a massive, massive triple. Not triple threat. No, we have a one-on-one -on -one match between Logan Paul and Tommaso Ciampa, Ciampa with Kevin Owens as special guest ref. Tomas, uh, Kevin Owens will be the special guest referee for the match between Logan Paul and Tommaso Ciampa. But after that, Logan, he came this week. He wanted to get some revenge on Tommaso. And in a way, he kind of did by taking out his best friend, Johnny Gargano. As you, Like I said, now it's a bit better. It's a bit clearer as he has the vest off. But Logan Paul, he didn't come here intending to have a match. He came here intending just to beat up Johnny. And now, he has two matches in front of him. He has this match against Johnny in just his normal gear he brought with his merchandise on. And he has one against Tommaso Ciampa at Clash of the Castle with Kevin Owens as special guest ref. Just stacking the numbers against Logan. And Logan is very, very ticked off as, you know, Randy Orton is not taking any of his crap. He's not taking any of it. Logan thought he was going to be able to walk all over Randy, and especially after defeating him at WrestleMania. Randy, you know, he said he has a clean slate for everybody, but Logan has quickly dirtied that slate up real freaking quick. And now he has in this Extreme Rules match against Johnny Wrestling. Johnny wanted to get his hands on Logan. This is not a United States Championship match. This is just a one-on-one -on -one Extreme Rules match. As Logan and Johnny are getting squared off with the referee John Cone. As Johnny Full had a steam clothesline taking Logan down. Stomp to the face missed. As Logan goes, collar elbow tie up. As Logan, big DDT. A massive DDT by Logan. As big punch. We know Logan's right hand. Oh, and now Logan attacking the other arm. Stomping the hand out. Oh, and a third one. Johnny. Johnny has to be careful here. Both men do have to be careful considering as soon as this Raw ends, they're going right to the UK as he drops him down with a back body drop. But they're going down to the or going over to the UK to face off a clash at the castle where Logan will be defending his United States Championship against Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano's best friend. It's a two count. Wow. 
match already kind of getting close to being over. Is Johnny already coming into this match a little hurt by Logan? Logan with a leg drop. Maybe a bit of a rough rider. But Johnny, he has this match, and then he has the match of his career. Ilya Dragunov at Clash of the Castle for the Cruiserweight Championship. The inaugural Cruiserweight Champion will be crowned there. Is Johnny working the legs up a bit, picking Logan up. Punch. Oh, my gosh. Punch right to the chest of Johnny as he lifts him up. Johnny was able to get out of it and chop block, taking Logan down. Logan, I'm sure he's a bit uncomfortable in this gear. You know, he's not wearing his typical wrestling gear as a belly-to-belly -belly from Johnny. Not wearing his typical wrestling gear. All, I, all he's wearing is that merchandise that you can get at WWEShop.com. The champ is here. A bit of a riff from John Cena's oh, big punch. Ooh, ooh, lighting him up with these strikes as he sends him to the ropes. Never mind. As a, ooh, backbreaker. Backbreaker from Logan as he goes to the outside. Looks like we're getting some tools here. As Logan, oh my goodness, bringing out a ladder. Bringing a ladder out, you know. That's just going to amplify the impact if you land on that thing. As Logan, fireman's carry. Stomp to the back. Now Logan trying to wear down Johnny Wrestling. Rubbing his wrist on it, on his forehead. Logan, oh, got caught with a punch. Oh, but a shot from Logan. And a shot from Johnny. Oh, we're trading blows. One from Johnny. And coming back with Logan. As Johnny with a chop once again. Logan with a chop. Another one. Oh, punch. No, Johnny was able to get out of it. An overhand shot there. And a punch from Logan. As we are still going at this. As Logan was able to block it. Now Johnny blocks it. And a shot from Johnny. Punch from Logan. Oh my goodness. We are still trading, guys. And now they're battling it out. Fist of Fury battling it out. These two just laying it into each other. As who's going to get the upper hand? Who's going to wake up first as Logan laying them in? It's Logan Paul. Big German suplex. Narrowly missing the ladder there. As Logan, with all those strikes, you have to think it's done some damage too. Johnny kicking out. My goodness. I have to take a breather with everything we've just seen. With all of the strikes back and forth. As now we're getting a trash can. It's a DDT. Just barely missing it. Is Logan trying to think of what he should grab here between the trash can and the ladder? You know, what? which one's going to do more damage as he decides to hit Johnny with the DDT on the apron? As Logan Paul, Logan Paul filling up this ring here as he looks to bring in a table into the mix. As he slides it in, but Johnny right back up to his feet gets out of there. Gets out of harm's way and he's saying, you know what, Logan, you want to bring something in? I got a kendo stick for you. As he whacks him over that forehead with that. He's saying, come on. Oh, they bump into each other. The kendo stick goes flying as Johnny sends Logan flying onto the concrete. Scraping the forearms of him. And a forearm, speaking of which. It's Johnny waiting for Logan to get up as he gets up, lifts him up. And now what's Johnny going to do? Oh, he he was starting to second guess himself. There is an elbow from Logan. As Logan, not second guessing himself, knows exactly where he wants him in the middle of that ring, which, is, which has been scattered with weapons galore. It's Johnny, Johnny coming back here. Johnny, oh, duck down, spin him around, kick to the side of the head. Kick to the side of the head as Johnny drop kick. Johnny with a drop kick as Logan able to recover real quick. Sends him over the top rope, tumbling down to the floor as Johnny wrestling, pacing back and forth. Goes to the outside, going right after him. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I thought he was going right after him, but he decides to grab a sledgehammer and drives it into the midsection of Logan. Midsection of Logan as this is all for payback. All the payback. For what happened transpired earlier on tonight is a cutter a cutter onto the floor but Johnny lands on the sledgehammer is Johnny Johnny taking a breather here 
You know what? That's probably the smartest thing to do. Taking that breather as that had to have hurt. Had to have hurt. Remember, Johnny Gargano is bandaged up from earlier. He's doing everything in his power to make sure he can pick up this W from Logan Paul. And what a W that would be. What a W that would be knocking off the United States champion as Logan elbows galore. And truth be told, Logan is also pretty banged up from last week. As he was sent through our commentary table, Moon saw it everything. And typically, he is the person to send people through the commentary table. But last week, he was on the receiving end of it. As Johnny, he's about to be on the receiving end of a chair shot. As Johnny Gargano is being relentless here with another one. Oh, oh no. Logan was able to roll through. Punch. Oh, my goodness. Punch the chest, rolls through, slide kick to the side of the head, Johnny. Not letting up on Logan. So he's looking a break. Turning his arm inside out there. Johnny needs to find a way to put Logan away. As he has done a lot of damage. Both men have done a lot of damage to each other. A lot of damage has been dished out between the two over the last couple of weeks. Johnny, episode one, defeated Santos Escobar and Ricochet to score himself a match at Clash of the Castle. Last week, Logan picked up a victory over Kevin Owens, but DDT from Johnny. Just Johnny with the knee once again. Johnny Gargano as he goes to the corner looking for that super kick. And it connects. Knocking Logan's headband almost clean off his cover. One, two, no. No, Logan was able to kick out at two. Is Johnny, Johnny, Gargano escape. The Gargano escape locked in here. Will Logan tap? Will Logan tap? Logan Paul, this is going to taint his legacy. Oh, Johnny letting go of it. As Logan, he, he didn't think that Logan was going to be done. So he does a few laps and gets out of the ring. Thinking about what he's going to do. Maybe trying to loosen up a bit here. Is now Johnny. Johnny looking for the Gargano escape again. Again, maybe Johnny with that hurt shoulder. Just loosening that thing up. So now he can lock it in once again. Doing some more damage. As he goes to the middle rope. A big splash onto Logan Paul. His cover. Hook in the leg. One. Two, no, Logan staying alive here in this matchup. I'm a little disappointed we haven't been utilizing these weapons yet. As Johnny gets back into the ring. Logan was able to get a hold of him this time as a neck breaker, taking Johnny down to the mat. You know, people call him Johnny Wrestling, but let's not forget Logan, a very tenured high school wrestling background. You can start calling him Logan Wrestling. Oh, but Johnny able to kick Logan off. As, oh, dive! Taking Logan out. Taking Logan out. It's Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano trying everything in his power. Even injured. Even hurt. He is still doing these dives. He is still putting everything, his heart and his soul into everything he has done. With a Hurricane Rana taking him out as he walks to the other side of the ring. Just to pick up some momentum as they both bump into each other. But Logan was able to... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, my goodness. As Logan... Ooh, sending him down with a neckbreaker onto the concrete floor. Neckbreaker onto the concrete floor. As now it's Logan Paul's match. Now Logan sending him, scraping him on. Oh, oh, oh. Here we... Go stomping the arm out on Johnny. Stomping the arm out as an elbow to the inside of the leg. Not sure what the uh, what the bad camera was there, but it, I think we got it fixed. With the technical difficulties have been fixed, but Logan Paul is still on the offense here. As a big splash to Johnny. Logan. Has dealt a lot of damage. He has been receiving a lot of damage. So the further and further this match goes, the longer we're going to have to wait as a big left to the face of Johnny. 
longer. We're going to have to wait as Logan... Logan, like I said, taking those laps, taking them breaths. I'm not sure what Logan's trying to think of here. Getting some laps in, get, trying to work that stamina back up. As Johnny, oh, kick to the back of the leg. And now he sends Logan into the commentary table. Logan kicks him off. Johnny roll through. Now Logan sending Johnny into the ring here. It's Johnny getting up to a knee. Logan not going to let him stand up as he hits him with a DDT. And now cover. Not hooking the leg as cover. One, two. No, Johnny's staying alive. Johnny Gargano staying alive here. Now Logan with an elbow. Logan Paul with an elbow. Johnny, both of these guys have to be in a heap of hurt right now. It's Logan sliding out of the ring. Comes right back in here as a boom! The one lucky punch. It's cover. Hooks the leg. One, two. No! Somehow Johnny's staying alive here. Johnny somehow staying alive as Logan wants to keep the punishment going as a big splash. Johnny Gargano is, I think he's severely ticked off Logan with this. Oh, oh, big submission hold, submission hold. Johnny rolls through, gets out of it. It's Johnny, grabs a hold of him, sends him to the ropes. Oh no, it's Johnny goes to the outside. Trying to gain some separation between the two as he hip hops over, punch in the face. And now Johnny lifts him up, back body drop. Onto the concrete floor. That has got to hurt Logan. That has to hurt Logan in some way, shape, or form. As, oh, elbow to the midsection. As Logan taking his time to get up. Is leaving him with these strikes. And once again to the midsection. Oh, my goodness. Johnny was able to throw him over his shoulder. The injured shoulder, mind you. It's going to be very interesting to see if either of these two will make it to Clash of the Castle. Both these men are looking to take all their anger and frustration out on each other. Is Johnny lifting Logan up once again? We have seen a ladder being introduced. We have seen a trash can, a table, a kendo stick, a sledgehammer as Johnny Gargano looks to be on the offense here. Getting the fans behind him. As Logan gets back up to his feet, goes to the corner. He's saying, bring it on. I don't know if that's the right thing to do as Johnny lifts him up on the top rope. And he throws him. Oh, my goodness. That left shoulder has to be in a heap of hurt as a bright sh shooting star from Johnny Gargano. As Johnny, Johnny is waiting for Logan as he kicks him in the back. Kicking Logan in the back. As Johnny jump into the top rope. Coup de Gras missed. Coup de Gras from his friend. Oh, and a Hurricane run onto the ladder. Hurricane run onto the ladder and an elbow drop as Logan is laid out on the ladder and the table. Johnny working the neck here. Who is going to walk out the victor? It's Johnny. Oh, slamming the back of his head on the metal. Johnny wrestling. Setting Logan up. Trips him down face first into the ladder. Is now Gargano escape. Gargano escape locked in here. Is Logan going to tap his hand? His hand very close to the ropes, but he taps anyway. Johnny Gargano knocking off the United States champion. Picking up one hell of a lot of momentum. Headed into the pay-per-view. Oh, here. Okay, well, <laughs> congratulations, Johnny. Camera is being messed up again, but either way, congratulations, Johnny Wrestling. As he defeats the United States champion, Logan Paul. My goodness, what a freaking intense battle that was. Let's see how much that's going to last. Drew, last week we spoke to LA Knight about being in the gauntlet match, and as you are officially now in the gauntlet match, as we have you here tonight on Monday Night Raw, what are your thoughts going into it? Well, headed back. It's my home country. I think it's real funny how everybody can look over Drew McIntyre. 
how everybody can look over, but it's my home court advantage. Roman, this go around, I'm going to kick his head off. Then you have Gunther and John battling it out in promo words. Figuring out who's going to win the whole thing. Drew McIntyre is winning the whole thing. I heard LA Knight earlier last week. And he could sit here, he can ramble on. And Braun Breaker doesn't have the experience for it. This is the perfect combination of Drew McIntyre. We're walking out of Clash of the Castle from my home country. I am walking out as world heavyweight champion. And John, Gunther, I want a match. I'm going to get a match. And since you both are already having one tonight, both open challenges, I'll say this, John, I'll see you tonight, buddy. Alrighty, and as the smoke settles from Johnny Gargano versus Logan Paul, just getting an interview from one of the members in the gauntlet match, one Drew McIntyre, saying he's going to be the one to face John Cena in the next match. But first, we do have an open challenge from Gunther here in Toronto, as Gunther, earlier on in the night, he set up a thing with John saying, you know what, let's both try getting some momentum headed towards Clash of the Castle. Let's both try to gain that momentum. And you know what, Gunther has an open challenge. John Cena, I think he has an open challenge, but Drew said he's going to be the one to answer it. So in the end, we will end up seeing, we'll end up seeing who answers John Cena's call. But first, let's not look any further then Gunther's open challenge. Gunther has taken the WWE by storm. Not necessarily in the new era, but we will see very, very soon as Gunther is ready for his opening, his open challenge. Who is it going to be? Who's going to answer the call? Is very, very anticipation building up and hold on. Hold on. I think I'm hearing some glorious music. Bobby Rude is here. He is back. Bobby. Bobby Rude. Don't mind the Titan Tron. It says Robert, but it's Bobby Rude. Bobby is here. And the brand new merchandise you can get at WWEshop.com. A lot of plugs for WWE Shop, but Bobby Roode's back here in Toronto. His home country of Canada. He makes his return against Gunther. Now, that's a very, very tall glass he has to try to overtake. But if anyone could do it, it's going to be the glorious one, Bobby Roode. I'm very, very excited to see this matchup and how well Bobby does after months, months, almost years out of action. See, so he decided to take a bit of a producer role in the backstage, but an oh so glorious one's back. I'm very, very hyped. You know what? Maybe, possibly, maybe Bobby throws such a good performance that he gets thrusted into the gauntlet match. You know, you never know with Randy. I'm just, I'm very excited to see what Bobby can do. Glorious! <laughs> I'm very, no, I'm very happy. I'm very happy to see Bobby back. Bobby, in all time, one of the best NXT champions. Former TNA superstar. And yes, I just mentioned TNA. As here we go. John Cohn, ring that bell. Is Gunther, oh, kick to the midsection already. Bobby, oh, Bobby's taking him down. Are we going to get an early, early submission? As John didn't even, didn't even check. He didn't even check. He has too much faith in Gunther. As Gunther spins around, oh, my goodness. Back to back. 
taking him down as Gunther has the back of the neck on Bobby. So he drives Bobby's face into the top turnbuckle, and now he's using the big boot, just choking him out with it. Just choking him out. As John Cone in the mid in the middle of it. As Gunther just eyeing down Bobby. Just eyeing him down. Talking some trash. Is, is John Cone in the middle of it all? Either way, I guess I, I don't know what's gonna I don't know what's happening here. No clue as to what's happening. But Gunther with a kick. And now it looks like Gunther's done with the trash talk. So he is stomping, kicking the face, scraping the face of Bobby. Oh, Bobby able to fight back here. Bobby trying to fight back. So he has a hold of Gunther. Big punch taking Gunther off of his feet. And now driving the knee into the forearm of Gunther. This is very smart. Taking the ring general, chopping him down piece by piece, block by block. As ooh, it looks like Gunther's actually busted open. I don't know where that cut is. Hopefully, it's not some sort of break. But Bobby, Bobby might need Gunther. You know, hey, Bobby. You know what? It, I don't, I don't like the way you'd be doing it. But if if Gunther's nose is broken, taking him out of action. We're going to need an open slot just in case, but I think maybe it depends. We'll have to check with our medical staff at the end of this matchup. But Bobby dropping him. Is Bobby cover? One. Only a one count is Gunther. Not going to let that up. Gunther's entire thing was to gain some momentum here. And that's what he needs. He's kicking him. Telling him to get up. Oh, the disrespect. Come on, Gunther. Gunther. Gunther might be slightly ticked off here. As Bobby is not taking any of it. Grabs a hold of him. Oh, gets caught with an elbow. Ring in the ear. Woo! Big chop. Oh! Oh, my goodness. Laying it in with these strikes. Oh, slap to the face. As Gunther, you don't want to piss him off. Oh, chop. As Gunther, tell him bring it on. As a punch to the face again. But Gunther, a punch with of his own. Woo! Big chop. Nature boy style. Oh, punch the face and another one. Nope. Punch back and forth. Round and round we go. Everybody. Bobby landing these strikes with precision. And so is Gunther as these two are battling it out. Battling it out. This has become from respect to just torment between the two as these two are battling it out two of the greatest in the ring right now oh shoulder tackle taking Gunther off of his feet as Bobby is saying come on I can take it all as Bobby goes to the middle rope big knee no Gunther able to move out of the way slamming the head onto the mat Slamming the head onto the mat is Gunther. Sends him in. Oh, never mind. Big chop. Knife edge chop, if that. It's rolling to the outside as Gunther stalking his prey. As Gunther grabs a hold of him, throws him over his shoulders. As Gunther fired up here. And now the disrespect still. The disrespect just kicking him. Kicking him while he's down. Bobby fighting through the neck breaker onto the concrete floor. A neck breaker onto the concrete floor. A drop kick sending Gunther into the ring post. It's Bobby Roode fighting with everything he's got. This is his return match. And what a way to make a statement as he gets sent into the barricade. Sent into the steel barricade there. It's the referee. It's Gunther. Ooh, uh oh. As Bobby Roode makes it into the ring just before the 10 count. He has a hold of Gunther draping him on the ropes. Lifts him up. Plants him right down on it. As Kug. One. Two. Gunther staying alive. Gunther staying alive. And the longer this match has gone on, the more I believe Bobby actually has a shot at this. As a big suplex. Where has Bobby been during the entirety of Gunther's championship, the Intercontinental Championship reign, when we needed him most? Because 
Honestly, Bobby might have it unlocked for Gunther as he's driving the fist into the face of Gunther. And he's doing it again. Come on, Bobby. Boston exposing the nose more so as, oh my goodness, Gunther bleeding on the mat as a corkscrew leg driving Bobby down. So Gunther needs to end this quick because the longer that this match goes on, the longer Bobby is fresh in the match. The longer this is not going to work out for Gunther as, uh-oh, uh-oh, Gunther's going to have to pay attention here as Bobby looks for the glorious D, D, T, connects, cover, he has him, cover hook in the leg, one, two, no, kick out by Gunther in the nick of time, I thought Bobby had it, I thought Bobby had it for a split second as he goes to the top rope. Driving the knee into the chest, and this time it connects as Gunther gets caught with a knee. Bobby found his opening. He has found, found the wounds of Gunther, and he has been executing it to a T. Stomp to the chest. He realized all that back and forth. The shots to the chest have to be taken a toll on Gunther. He has to realize he saw the blood dripping down from his nose as Bobby is looking to stop Gunther's momentum just like that. Okay, Bobby doesn't want to win like that. Stopping the count. Made it to the outside. Stopping the count as Gunther kick. And now Gunther's throwing him all the way. That exposed concrete, you know, anytime you're on that thing, it's going to do its damage. Is Bobby taking a breather here as Gunther's laughing on clothesline, taking Bobby down. Now Gunther slamming his head on the mat. Gunther, I believe the ring general is severely ticked off as the ring general might have just been taken down. Oh, Gunther. Oh, elbows to the midsection. As he lifts up Bobby, dropping him on the top rope. See, taking the arm, taking the arm, able to use every single limb, taking it all out, taking all the aggression out as he jumps up, planting him down. It's good there with the stomps, my goodness. Oh, big knee driving it into the side of the face of Bobby as Bobby needs to get the offense back on his side here as Gunther is not going to let up for a single second in another knee. I think Gunther's trying to reciprocate the pain that Bobby has put him through with that nose. As Gunther goes to the top, you will not normally see Gunther fly, but he does with a massive drop kick. And now Gunther... Oh, driving his fist into the face, you know. Usually, Gunther is a bit more respectable about all this. But with this, with how much, how close Bobby was to putting this match away, I don't think Gunther, as he drops on face front onto the concrete, I don't think Gunther is going to keep that respect on for much longer as he sends him into the ring. Alrighty, as we're back, fully back into the ring as Bobby gets up. Neckbreaker missed. Gunther was able to slip out of it. But Bobby, oh no, knee to the gut. As Gunther has a hold of him. He's driving him into the top turn. Buckle! Woo! With the chops and a European uppercut, sending him down. As Gunther trying to get this done. One, two... Bobby, oh, just barely able to get the shoulder up. As Gunther, very smart with how he pins. He put all of his weight on the shoulders, knowing that that's what he had to do. As Bobby was just barely able to lift one of them up. And now Gunther looking to fly with a massive dropkick, this time in the ring. Perfectly executed. As Gunther, he is not done yet. He is not done yet. Blood dripping from the nose as he is looking. Lifts him up and hits him with a glorious power bomb. Cover. One, two. No! Bobby! Bobby kicks out. Bobby kicked out. Bobby Roode is kicked out. He is staying alive. 
And I hit this with every single week, but he's staying alive. Call him the Bee Gees. The power slam. Gunther lifting him up. Punch to the face. And now Gunther. Gunther, the ring general. So many ways to put a crone in a way. As now he's looking for the sleeper hold. Sleeper hold locked in. Sleeper hold locked in. As Bobby has no other way but to tap out Gunther. What a hard fought battle that was. But Gunther getting the job done. In the end, he got the job done. But it could have just cost him his Clash of the Castle spot. We're going to have to take a look at that in the back. But what a nasty battle wound. Wise man, do you not trust your tribal chief, the head of the table? No, I, I, I do, my tribal chief. I, I do. So who the hell were you speaking to? What, what do you mean? Don't you play games with me? Who were you speaking to? I, 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 I don't know, my tribal chief. I... I <laughs> <laughs> Not so wise, are ya, Paul? Last episode, footage was spilt out. Someone was recording your conversation and with who were you speaking to? Uh, oh, um, I, I, was, I was speaking to Braun Breaker, sir. Sir? Why were you speaking of Braun Breaker? Um, I was trying to recruit him in, in the bloodline. You know, young upstart talent, second generation. Really? That's not what you said. Mr. Eamon, you said you wanted out. You said you wanted out of the bloodline. Uh, I'm sorry, my tribal chief. I wanted to speak to Braun to, to get on his good side so that when you get in the ring with him, then you'll be able to just, he'll just lay down for you. That's it, Paul. You know, Paul, after episode one, I lost to Cena. Why was that? It, it, it was because you weren't there. Paul, you've been failing me left, right, and center, and now, now I'm this close to kicking you to the curb. Paul, make sure you get solo. Make sure he signs with Monday Night Raw, and if he is not at Clash at the Castle, You don't want to know what's going to happen to the little old wise man. Oh my, okay, so Roman Reigns just threatened his wise man, Paul Heyman, in which now we are getting set up for the man who defeated Roman Reigns. Episode 1, we're getting set up for John Cena's Open Challenge. And his Open Challenge, earlier, was already accepted by Drew McIntyre. So it is John Cena versus Drew McIntyre in tonight's main event. But before I forget, there is still one more thing after this main event, and that is a face-to-face -face between Johnny Gargano and Ilya Dragunov, the two people who won their respective triple threat matches to go one-on-one -on -one at Clash of the Castle to, in to decide the inaugural Cruiserweight Champion. But either way, John Cena earlier on tonight, Gunther called him out. He said he was a part-timer. He said that he was only here to get the bag. And now John Cena, he is here to prove tonight that he is no part-timer, that he is back full-time at least for this run. John Cena, one of the greatest of all time, greatest to ever do it, here tonight to prove Gunther wrong and to gain some momentum against one of the members in the gauntlet match, that member being the Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre.
Drew earlier on tonight. He was questioned. He was questioned about Roman. He was questioned about John, Gunther, Knight, Breaker. He was questioned about all five of those other men. He said that, essentially he said that the Clash of the Castle is the second coming of Drew McIntyre. Clash of the Castle is the night for him to fix his wrongs. And it's the night to ignite the fire back into Drew. As here he comes down, Drew McIntyre, a very difficult feat he has in front of him against John Cena, who, you know, like I said, he, he lost for half a decade plus in one-on-one -on -one competition. Drew McIntyre, in that time frame, he has become two-time WWE Champion. John Cena now facing, trying to become his 17th time WWE Champion, World Heavyweight Champion in his entire tenure in the WWE. Drew McIntyre here to stop that. It's not, there's no stakes on the line tonight, just momentum. That is what's at stake here tonight. If you lose, if you're coming off of a loss, that momentum has been derailed when it comes to Clash of the Castle. We know Roman Reigns is coming out first, but it all kind of just depends on who comes out second, third, fourth, fifth, and eventually sixth as Drew McIntyre running through John to start this contest. As Drew powerbomb, sit out powerbomb to John Cena. Drew McIntyre used to using his power to his advantage, the strength to his advantage as another powerbomb. And now cover, looking for the win here. One, only a one count. You're not going to put away big match John like that. You're not going to put John away that quickly. As, oh, armbar, armbar locked in on Cena. But Cena is able to roll through. John Cena needs to get some momentum on his side. Especially momentum headed into Clash of the Castle, but a punch from Drew. And now Drew, oh, gets shoved off. And now he's back up as these two behemoths are going head to head as he sends him over the top rope. Blacks again and a wicked punch to then, oh, John. John draping his body over the apron, or not apron, the ropes, as now he sends Drew to the ropes. Drop down and an arm drag throwing him over his shoulder. Is John wrenching the neck here. Working on Drew. Working, trying to pry the head off of him. John Cena, this means all to him. As, oh, John Cena. Showing he's got some power in him. As he lifts Drew McIntyre up, sits him out with a power bomb as John goes to the top rope. Calling for Drew to get up to his feet here. Oh, no. No, a little bit of mind games as he springboard stunner taking Drew down as now cover hooks the leg. One, only a one count. Springboard stunner, only a one count by John Cena as John goes to the skies. Oh, dropping him face first onto the concrete floor. Driving the leg drop, taking Drew's head and smashing it into the concrete floor. So he sends him back into the ring here. So now John looking for something huge. He has to give him a huge, a huge shoulder tackle there. Now an elbow poking him in the eye. There's John. He's looking for something there, but Drew with a leg sweep. Drew McIntyre fighting back here. He's fighting through everything he can to stay alive in this matchup. Getting This is only the beginning stages of the match as Drew lifting Cena up. Oh, punch missed. Forearm from Cena. Is Cena fighting back here? Cena is fighting back here. What an upset it would be if John Cena can get the momentum headed into Drew's home country. One, only a one count. Drew has to get that momentum. The momentum is very, very important because why? Because it gets the gears in motion. It gets you confident in order to head into the match. And especially if you pick up a loss against one of the people in the gauntlet match, that's going to derail your confidence. Because if you can't beat them in a one-on-one -on -one match, what happens if you can get through two other people and then have to face them? That adds another stake to things as Drew McIntyre. Oh, a petty kick to the face and another one. Come on, Drew. 
Drew lifts Cena up from the ground and throws him. Throws him across the ring as Drew McIntyre watches as Cena is crawling his way into the corner as a ooh, massive splash into the corner as Drew laying in these fists of fury into Cena as Drew lifts him up from the ground once again and he throws him across the ring. Oh, Drew! Drew, my goodness, does it again! Drew McIntyre not letting Cena take a breath for a second. It's a power bomb. Here on the Powerbomb Inc. YouTube channel, go down below, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. As after this main event match, we will be getting a segment between Johnny Gargano and Ilya Dragunov. Stomp missed. Is Cena running crossbody? A crossbody taking Drew out. And now Dr John getting some offense in as he's stomping in the chest of Drew. Cena. Cena deadlifted Drew. 250 plus pound man. It's a lot of power being dished out here. Is John. John has to be looking for something as Drew. Big clothesline, club and blow, taking John off of his feet. And now Drew. Drew. Oh, shoulder tackle. Taking John down. With a, oh, Glasgow kiss. And now cover, hook in the leg. One, two, John staying alive. John Cena staying alive as Drew goes to the corner. Three. Two, one, looking for Claymore Country. Claymore connects. The Claymore connects as cover hooks the leg. One, two, no, Cena staying alive here. Drew McIntyre just pinned him almost for the three count. Very, very close as John, veteran maneuver, rolling to the outside, although Drew McIntyre, also a veteran, staying on the attack, diving missed. Is John able to get some offense in here as an elbow to the spine? Elbow to the spine as John needs this. John needs this to stay alive in this matchup here. Drew trying to fight back as John back and forth. These strikes galore as he plants him on the concrete. Stomp missed as Drew sends John into the steel steps as the referee getting higher and higher in the count. Higher and higher as Drew McIntyre has a hold of Cena, but Cena fighting back here. Cena's fighting back. As John has a hold of Drew, but Drew now fighting back here. Drew fighting back. As a count of nine, as Drew get, makes it back into the ring. Cena, Cena running. No, no, just barely not able to make it back into the ring as John is still ready to go. Drew McIntyre was just able to barely make it back into the ring. And John, John distraught on the outside. That does suck to see, but stay tuned. We are not done yet here, folks, as we have a face-off between Johnny Gargano and Ilya Dragunov. Like what you see? Tune in Friday nights at 6 p.m. over on the Superkick Theory YouTube channel for Friday Night Smackdown and more Universe Mode action. As we are back here in Toronto, Canada for the final segment of the night between Ilya Dragunov and Johnny Gargano. The winner of this match, or these two will be going head to head at Clash of the Castle, but the winner of that match will become the Cruiserweight Champion. The Cruiserweight Champion, the inaugural Cruiserweight Champion. And that, that cements your legacy in the history books forever being the first one to do it is a large large burden upon someone's shoulders and Ilya Dragunov the man the dragon he he ran through Rey Mysterio and Wesley to get to this position as he is looking more dapper than ever the man who has defeated Gunther Gunther, before his longest reigning Intercontinental Championship reign, he was the UK champion for over a thousand days. And this, this is the man who ended it all. 
This is the man who ended Gunther's 1,000 plus championship reign as the UK champion. And he has won one heavy hitter. Former NXT champion. A lot of accolades this man has. And boy oh boy, especially Johnny Gargano getting jumped in the parking lot in the backstage area. Then, then Johnny had a full-blown 20-minute Extreme Rules match against one Logan Paul, the United States champion. Johnny Gargano has to be looked at as a massive, massive underdog in this match. But Johnny Wrestling, if I know him like everybody else does, Johnny Wrestling will just keep fighting. Is Johnny surprised he's able to even make it out here tonight, but you know what? Johnny has fought through worse. He has fought through battles, wars against his best friend, even. Now, Johnny. Like, I was running down Ilya's accolades. Johnny, first ever, first ever NXT Triple Crown Champion, meaning he is NXT Champ, North American Champ, Tag Team Champion. Is now on the main roster. He is looking to do the same, become a Grand Slam champ. That is all what this means. As we are about to get the face to face between these two. It's Johnny Wrestling and Ilya Dragunov. Here we go. Johnny, I'm ecstatic that we could have this face to face here tonight. After episode one, you defeated Santos Escobar. And Ricochet. Well, last episode, I defeated a Hall of Famer, Rey Mysterio, and the rookie, Wesley. Now, Johnny, I know how much this means to me. Becoming Cruiserweight Champion the first year that I am here in the company on the main roster would mean the world to me. I'm not sure your heart's in the right place. Taking on Logan Paul earlier on tonight. Injuring yourself even more after the brutal attack he suffered upon you. Johnny. Now there's a lot of respect between us, but let's call a spade a spade. You can't beat the dragon at 100%. You can't beat me now. Ilya, like you said, there is a lot of mutual respect between the two of us. And that that's not going unforgotten, but after Logan attacked me in the parking lot for something I had no part of when Tommaso attacked him last week. Tommaso's none of my business now. He attacked me. He made business with me. And over a year ago, here in the same exact building, I made my return to WWE on the main roster. Debuting on the main roster. And I set out a bunch of goals. A bunch of goals in which I haven't really executed upon them yet. I competed at WrestleMania. Check. That's it. I haven't won the IC title. I haven't won the WWE Championship. I said I wanted to do that all my little boy back home what kind of a father would I be if I didn't face the bully head on if I didn't go ahead to head against Logan despite what he did to my arm despite what he did to my rib cage my back everything what would that make me make me a bad example and truth be told I'm trying to right those wrongs I'm still trying to accomplish those goals I said I wanted to retire years ago. I said I wanted to retire at 40. 40, it's coming up. It's coming up real quick. And Ilya, I don't think I can do that in the next three, four years. So despite everything, despite everything, in the WWE, it's all about who the fans get behind. Just take a look at LA Knight. Last year, 2023. He had one heck of a run. You want to know why? It's not because the company or the 
or the higher ups believed them, it's because the fans did. And quite frankly, I haven't given the fans a single reason to believe in Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Wrestling, it's a moniker that the NXT fans gave me. It's a moniker because they know that I can step foot toe to toe against anybody in the locker room. 100%, at 1%, I am going in there and fighting my all. I am the Rebel Heart. I am what they call me. I am Johnny Frickin' Wrestling. And if I can't get these fans behind me again, then it is a line in the sand that I cannot cross. It's a glass ceiling that guys like me, who I have to sit here, who have to fight, pry, claw their way to the top. Guys like Daniel Bryan, Shawn Michaels, the Heartbreak Kid. People like that who, have, who had to claw their way to the top. People like that. Those people were the ones I looked up to because they meant something. They they were the, just the common man. Now I'm in that position. Quite frankly, I didn't give my boy the right genetics. Yeah, I'm not a six foot tall monster. And my hips have not been perfectly aligned in forever. But, but when you look at me, what, what do you see? You see a man, maybe with great abs, fine. That's fine. So I have to sit here and I have to prove to not just everyone around the world, but everyone at home, everyone in the back, everybody, and especially my son, Quill, that with the right motivations, with the right stake at heart, with the heart, the rebel heart, you can do anything in this world. And quite frankly, that's what I'm going to do. Said I need the fans to get behind me. I need the fans to sit here and to help me get to the top. And that is what I'm going to do. I am going to defeat you, Ilya. I need that cruiserweight championship. I need something that I can sink my teeth into. I need something that I can lay my hat on and say, I did that. I did that. And you know what I'm going to use that Cruiserweight Championship for? I'm going to use it to catapult myself up to the Intercontinental Championship. And then I'm going to use that Intercontinental Championship and I'm going to catapult myself up to the WWE Championship. And then with that WWE Championship, I'm going to use it to get myself my WrestleMania main event to fulfill the childhood dreams. The childhood dreams of my baby boy at home. His childhood dreams. I'm going to bestow that championship upon my wife, upon my kid, upon my dog. And with everybody will be around all around the world, I will be able to finally say I told you so. And now you look at me, you think I'm crazy because oh Johnny, Johnny hasn't done anything. Johnny hasn't done anything I haven't proved to you, but I swear to God, by the end, by the end of this whole thing, by the end of my match against you, Ilya. You might have defeated Gunther, but I am going to slay the dragon. I am going to slay you. And everybody around the world will be chanting Johnny Frickin' Wrestling. And I will go down as the ultimate underdog in this fight. And my oh my, here we go. I am more hyped than ever for this one-on-one -on -one contest at Clash at the Castle. But either way, thank you all for watching. Make sure you go down below. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to watch SmackDown, go to the Superkick Theory YouTube channel, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. And you can watch that every single Friday. You can watch Monday Night Raw here on the Powerbomb Make YouTube channel every single Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have have a good day, have a good night, whatever time is for you, and goodbye.